let's start with the 10th chapter the chapter is on the concept of gdp estimation in the last couple of years there has been a lot of discussion related to whether the gdp estimated by the agencies that is cso now nso is this particular gdp estimation correct before i discuss what analysis has been done or what is the result of the analysis conducted in the economic survey let me give you certain very important basic points one gdp stands for gross or domestic product for any economy the total market value of goods and services that are produced in a specific time period is called as gdp that is in case of india let's say hypothetically in this particular financial year the market value of all the goods and services that are produced are worth 2 trillion dollars then this particular market value of all the goods and services will be referred as gross domestic product or gdp gdp for any economy can be calculated through three methods one is called as a income method second one is called as production or output value method and the third one is called as expenditure method in case of india we follow two methodologies or we basically calculate gdp under two heads one is the expenditure method and the second one is the output value method now let's focus on the output method in case of the output method the total market value of output is considered and this is nothing but the concept of a gdp itself now what has been the contention couple of years ago that is from 2015 cso now this is nso cso basically introduced certain changes in terms of a gdp calculation methodology that is earlier the base year was 2004 and 2005 cso changed this particular base year to 2011 and 12 first important change second we rather than calculating gdp based on production cost shifted to a methodology wherein will be focused on market cost third rather than taking the output data under the concept of iip index of industrial production we shifted to a new methodology wherein the data will be collected from a new methodology called as mca21 database i'll repeat the statement earlier we used to take the production data under the concept called as index of industrial production now we have shifted to a concept where we are focused on the idea of a mca21 and within mca21 we are going to calculate a concept called as gva gross value addition so in simple terms earlier we used to take the production data under the idea of iip now we will take the data from gross value addition these are some of the very important changes that were introduced in gdp calculation methodology under the output method and this particular new methodology came into force or in simple terms cso started calculating gdp by using this particular methodology from the year 2015 and all of these particular features are basically packaged under a concept called as sna systems of national accounts now understand this after we shifted from the old methodology to the new methodology various experts have raised a certain issue with the gdp that is calculated using this particular methodology their argument is very simple in certain situations the gdp that is calculated has been overestimated in this context i'll give you two examples one when the new methodology was introduced some of the experts compared gdp growth rate for the same period under the old methodology and using the new methodology i'll repeat the statement when the new methodology was introduced some of the experts compared the gdp growth rate for the same time period using the old methodology as well as the new methodology they found that there is a huge disparity or the difference between the gdp growth estimates for the same time period in certain quarters the difference in the gdp growth rate for the same quarters has been more than 200 basis points so their argument is how can such a huge difference come using two different methodologies for the same time period second issue has been in the recent time period one paper has been published or a survey has been conducted by former cea mr arvind subramanian as per his calculation the gdp in case of india for every quarter under the new methodology has been overestimated by 250 basis points that is if government of india says gdp growth rate is let's say 7% 
then his argument is it will not be 7%, it would rather be around 4.5%. And again, I'm saying under the new methodology for a simple reason, although we calculate GDP under expenditure method as well as output method, the GDP calculation under output method is considered to be more creditable or much better compared to GDP calculation under the expenditure method. Hence, the doubts which have been raised with respect to this particular methodology or the latest methodology which is used to calculate GDP under the output method has become a cause of concern for various stakeholders. Now apart from this, very recently, a survey that was conducted by NSSO with respect to the number of companies which are covered under the MCA21 database or the number of companies which are used to calculate GDP, there have been certain concerns raised with respect to this particular list. As per the survey conducted by NSSO, it states that around one third of the companies has become a cause of concern for various stakeholders. Now, apart from these two, last year itself, there was an issue with respect to the type of companies or the companies which are considered in calculation of GDP under the MCA21 database. NSSO had raised certain concerns with respect to one third of the companies which are considered in this particular database. It stated that these particular companies either are not functioning or have closed down. Hence, there is an overestimation of GDP. Now, why overestimation of GDP is a problem? First, we have discussed the concept of a GDP. Second, we have stated what has been the concern with respect to GDP methodology. Third one, why correct GDP estimation is needed? Please understand, many of the times, the decisions with respect to investments by the private sector be it domestic private sector or foreign private sector is based upon the GDP growth rates itself. Higher the GDP growth rate means this particular economy is performing very well. The utilization of resources is going to increase. The returns or the profit margins in this particular economy is going to increase. So you will find there is a correlation or there is a linkage between higher GDP growth rate as well as the investment from the private sector in this particular economy. Apart from this, it will also have a very big bearing on the policies of the government of India. That is, government of India must decide whether it should intervene in or it should stay back in the market or from the market so as to allow the private sector to participate and contribute to growth rate. For example, if GDP growth rate is in, let's say, double digit numbers, then the role of the government should be very minimal. The government should be focused on collection of as much taxes as possible because of this particular growth rate and utilization of these particular resources or revenues to achieve various objectives such as inclusive growth in the market. But when the GDP growth rate comes to let's say 4%, 4.5%, 3%, role of the government will be different. Now government will try to revive the GDP growth rate. So the correct estimation of GDP is very important even for government of India to formulate its policies. And finally, the role of the RBI or the central banker. Under the concept of inflation targeting, RBI has been given the primary objective of controlling the inflation at 4%. It can allow or it will have a leeway of plus or minus 200 basis points. In simple terms, RBI can allow the inflation rate up to 6% or it can allow the inflation rate to fall up to 2%. The inflation rate has to be around 4% always. Now, objective is, if inflation is very much within the range or within 4% range itself, and the growth rate is very less, then RBI's role will shift from controlling inflation to promoter of growth. How does RBI promote growth? Reduce the interest rate. Infuse more and more capital into the market using various tools. Best example, in the recent times, RBI has reduced repo rate, RBI has conducted operation twist, apart from conducting open market operation as usual. But if the GDP growth rate is let's say 8%, 9% and inflation is inching towards 5%, then RBI's primary focus will not be to promote growth, rather it will be to control inflation or bring it down to around 4%. So how the monetary policy is formulated is also dependent on the GDP. So the right estimation of GDP is very, very important. This is the basic introduction to the concept of a GDP overestimation, which is being discussed in the recent times. Now, what has the economic survey done? It has basically taken into consideration the methodology that has been used by various experts to come to a conclusion that there is an overestimation in India 
has applied the same methodology in many countries. Now, what is the methodology I'm referring to? That is not required for UPSC. The analysis is also not required for UPSC. Please understand, all the discussion related to the concept of overestimation of GDP is usually focused on whether this particular GDP growth rate represents the growth rate in various macroeconomic parameters. For example, there is a very close linkage between offtake of credit in the market with the GDP growth rate. We expect that with a higher offtake of credit by the banking sector, the loans will become cheaper in the market. And when loans become cheaper in the market, more companies will take loans, production will increase, GDP will also increase, employment will increase. There will be a virtuous cycle of growth observed in the economy. For example, close linkage exists between electricity consumption as well as GDP. Because electricity is one of the very important requirements for production process. If production has to increase, electricity consumption also has to increase. That is the reason in the recent times, the drop in the demand for electricity has become one of the cause of concern. Third very important parameter that is usually considered is the earnings of the companies or profits. If I simply say GDP has increased, it means that the profits of the companies must also have increased. So there is a correlation. Fourth, what about the employment? If GDP has increased, production has increased. If production has increased, employment should also have increased. So how many employment opportunities have been created in the Indian economy in the last couple of years? So usually, whenever they discuss the idea of a GDP overestimation, the critics always put forward these particular arguments, saying that credit offtake to industrial sector has been subdued. The profits or the earnings of these particular companies has been much, much lesser. The exports in the recent times have flattened out in case of India. The employment created in the formal sector or in the core industries has been much, much lesser compared to what jobs have been created in the last decade. So putting forward these particular points, their argument is, if all these particular macroeconomic parameters are either red or not sufficient or not satisfactory, how can the GDP growth rate achieved for Indian economy be 7% or for that matter, 6%. So they basically come to a conclusion that GDP in case of India has been overestimated. Now economic survey has used the same analysis or has used the same methodology and compared the GDP of various other countries. What has been observed by economic survey? Economic survey says uh, the analysis uh, is based on the correlation between GDP and the other factors such as credit growth, electricity consumption, railway freight traffic, etc. The correlation keeps on changing and flipping once every three to five years. That is, yes, in certain scenarios, the correlation is positive. As these particular parameters starts performing well, GDP also increases. But after every three to five years, this particular correlation keeps on flipping. That is, there is no constant relation between uh, these particular parameters. Once every three to five years, this particular relationship changes. And the analysis has been conducted for a duration between 1980 to 2015. Apart from this, economic survey also says that if this methodology is applied, then there is a GDP overestimation in more than 50 countries. So this is not actually true. Economic survey says, the concerns which have been raised with respect to the estimations of GDP or to be more precise or estimation of GDP are unsubstantiated as well as unfounded. Hence, whatever GDP growth estimates have been done using the latest methodology, these particular GDP growth rates are correct. This is the gist of the discussion which has been provided in this particular chapter.